Hey what's up guys this is Sonip Sky and in this video I'm going to show you how to do boot solos and Windows 10 or 11 so without wasting any more time let's get started. So first of all open your web browser and search for solos. Go to the first official link and click on download. There are four editions of solos but I recommend you to download the flagship version which is the budgie edition. And while it is downloading, go to another tab and search for Rufus. Go to the official website of Rufus and download the latest version of Rufus. We need Rufus to make a bootable USB of Ruf uh, Solus. Now once the both files are downloaded, insert your pen drive which is at least of 8 GB and please make a backup of your pen drive data because it will be formatted. And Go to your downloads directory and open Rufus. Now it will automatically detect your pen drive and select the ISO file which we just downloaded earlier. And for the partition scheme, go to your Windows search and type system information. And under BIOS mode, if you see UEFI, then you need to choose gpt and if you see legacy then you need to set, choose mbr option and once you have selected that click on start and it will start making the bootable usb of rufus and this may take a while so i'm going to fast forward this part now after this process is completed Close everything and then right click on your start menu and open disk management. Now click on any local disk and select shrink volume. Now give about 40 GB of free space for Solus. And then close disk management and now it's time to restart the computer and boot from the USB. Now while your computer is restarting you need to press the boot menu key which is usually the F12 key or escape key and it will show you the list of bootable devices. Now you need to select the USB option and it will start booting into the Solus Live USB. Now once you have put it into the live ISO, please make sure everything works properly before installing and once you have done that, click on install Solus. Now before proceeding with the installation, click on start menu and open Gparted and make sure the correct drive is selected and click on the unallocated space which you created on Windows and select new and create a new 500 MB FAT32 partition after that click on the unallocated space again and set the remaining free space as ext4 partition now once you have done that, click on the checkbox at the top and it will start creating those partitions. And once you have done that, click on the newly created FAT32 partition and select manage flag and give boot and ESP flag to it. And once you have done that, right click on the Windows EFI partition which is usually at the first and select manage flag and remove the boot and ESP flag from it. Now once you have done that close Gparted and proceed with the installation. First of all choose your installation language and then your uh, time zone and your keyboard layout. Now comes the most important part which is the partitioning. 
now you are presented with the three options you need to choose the third option which says assign pre-mounted configuration now you will see a list of partitions present in your system and your disks now you need to find the ext4 partitions which we created earlier and assign the mount point as root partition which is the forward slash After that it will ask you to install the bootloader and it will automatically detect the FAT32 EFI partition which you created earlier. So choose that partition and select a host name. After that enter your user details and your password and begin the installation. The installation will take a while so I'm going to fast forward this part. Now after the installation is complete, don't just reboot yet. Open the menu and open Gpart it again and right click on the Windows EFI partition and select manage flag and give back the boot and ESP flag to it. After that, you can reboot the system and while your computer is starting, press the boot menu key and select the Solus from the list and you can remove the USB at this point and it will automatically boot into Solus and it is not showing any menu to select the operating system so we are going to boot into Solus and fix it. Now once you have booted into Solus, open the menu and open terminal. Now type sudo lsplk and it will show you the list of your uh, drives and your partitions. Now as you can see my root and my boot partition and if you don't see the boot partition mounted then you can type the following command to mount the uh, ES5 partition to the boot partition. Now after that you need to locate your windows EFI partition as you can see this is my windows EFI partition now we need to mount the windows EFI partition so type this following command sudo mkdir slash mnt slash win and win we are going to mount this partition in this directory so type the following command sudo mount slash date slash your windows EFI block number and then slash mnt slash win now we are going to copy the windows bootloader files to the boot partition of solus so type sudo cp dash r slash mnt slash win slash efi slash microsoft space slash boot slash efi By default Solus uses systemd boot so we are going to configure some settings so type sudo nano slash boot slash loader slash loader dot conf and you will see the default configurations. Now add timeout and give value 5 seconds. You can give it more if you want. And then type 
console dash mode and give it value of max and if it does not work then you can type auto so after that press ctrl plus o to save and ctrl plus x to exit nano now you can reboot the system and while your computer is starting press f2 key to boot into the bios menu and give the top priority to solus after that save your settings by pressing f10 and it will automatically save and reboot the system now it will automatically boot into Solus every time and it will show a menu to choose between the operating system. For now, I'm going to choose Solus. So as you can see, we are able to boot into Solus and it is working just fine. Now we are going to reboot to check if our Windows is working or not. So I'm going to choose the Windows 10 option and as you can see we are booting into Windows. So we are also able to boot into Windows just fine and it is working properly. So that's it for the video guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you found this video helpful and if you did please leave a like and subscribe to my channel. Thank you.